Hey Kalen, it's Aaron again. I just wanted to respond briefly to your video about race. Um, I think you raise a valid point in as much as we shouldn't ignore the fact that there is variation, uh, genetically speaking, within the human race. And this could have a definite impact on things like medicine. You pointed out um, in your comments about you know sickle cell anemia, or maybe it was comments to a video response. But either way, you made a good point about that. I, you know, certainly, if there is a subgroup of people that can benefit from a particular kind of drug or treatment more than another group, it's not racist to do that. There was an episode of House. I mean, I hate to be a geek and talk about uh, pop culture, but there was an episode of House where this happened, where a, an African American man did not want to receive this treatment because it was for African American people, and he thought, you know, it was a conspiracy to give black people bad drugs or whatever. Um, now I'm going to have to edit because I was rambling. Um, but uh, as much as there is a little bit of merit in that, I think that really it's a non-issue in the realm of science. It's it's really a, it's more of an issue for us on the street, you know, <laughs> just, just us people talking about things. I think in science, race is basically ignored not because it's taboo or offensive but because it has proven to be a dead end and a kind of a dry well for the most part as far as comparative studies and uh, when they mapped the human genome um, you know they found that really there is a lot of variation but more than anything there's similarities and yes it's important to notice those variations especially where they can help people like in medical studies um, but they you know they did they used to do all this kind of stuff where they would like take the skulls of different races and fill them up with shot like lead pellets and um, they'd say oh well this race is clearly is more intelligent because it has a greater brain capacity and uh, it was a dead end it was totally bunk it was totally debunked uh, there's a great book by Stephen Jay Gould called The Mismeasure of Man that was kind of a uh, a retort to a popular book that had been written just before called The Bell Curve, which was like basically scientific justification for racism. Um, and Stephen Jay Gould talked, you know, he basically just destroyed it. He blew it out of the water and talked about how, as a society, we were kind of setting up our own. I mean, everyone's made the argument about the SATs being favored towards men, intelligence tests being favored towards, you know, white people. Um, and there is a lot to say about that. Now, at the same time, there are other factors such as uh, it's not if I am born of a certain race or uh, even uh, religion in America or in anywhere else I may have different circumstances as far as you know economic circumstances social circumstances so it's really hard first of all to do this kind of testing fairly now with genetics you can you can do this fairly un in an unbiased light um, and I think that's where, if anything, we're going to get the, uh, the good benefits of this kind of research. But I think for the most part it's a non-issue in the scientific world because it's really been exhausted. Uh, there, was, there were a lot of attempts to do this kind of comparative st study. And um, basically, there are, as far as genes go, I think as, as far as races go, there may be some common dominant physical attributes that are common you know in genes but variation as far as intelligence goes and like driving ability it, it's really I think that is far more of a, a circumstantial um, really a, a circumstantial issue I mean, yes you can be more inclined to be curious or you can be more inclined to be introspective and you can say those two attributes together might lead to you spending a lot of time reading books instead of going out and flying kites or whatever it was that the um, extroverted kids did I, I don't really know <laughs> um, so yeah your genetics may lend a little bit but in the end it's always potential I mean you know this I don't have to tell you this but I'm just telling you my my spiel here so it's always potential and always lies in the individual and the circumstances have a much greater impact on that kind of thing. Um, that's my view. I'm a soft determinist. I believe that genetics determine our tendencies for the most part and uh, circumstance and environment determines the rest to a greater extent. But genetics certainly have an impact on our lives. We can't ignore that. And I think to ignore it to the detriment of science would be dangerous, but really we don't. As far as I'm as far as I know, I mean, I'm not really, I don't have my finger on the pulse of the scientific community, really. I just try and keep up. But as far as I know, it's not like we're being limited because it's a racist study. That's not really happening. And those are 
really any studies that would fall under that um, are not going on anymore anyways thanks to you know again uh, Stephen Jay Gould and, and people like that who are working within the scientific community to dispel racism uh, if you haven't read The Mismeasure of Man I highly recommend it it's a great book very positive and uplifting um, it's one of those books that makes me feel <laughs> really happy to be an atheist and yeah of course Stephen Jay Gould was religion friendly certainly more so than Richard Dawkins but uh, it's one of those books that kind of reminds you of how great science is and you know if, if science can show people how stupid racism is maybe it can make the world a better place so thank you for your time catch you on later down the trail